Let's start this video off by polishing our model. What we're going to be doing is looking closely at the fabric and fixing as many clipping issues as possible. I will be removing some of the seams, fixing the collar, and moving the sleeves forward. The first thing we're going to do is fix the clipping between the plate carrier and the torso. Start in edit mode, switch on vertex selection mode, and then switch on proportional editing. Zoom in and click on one of these vertex points. You can control the proportional editor's area of effect by scrolling the mouse wheel. Let's pull this section in a bit. Make it hug the plate carrier without clipping through it. On the other side, I'm going to switch to edge mode and select this edge and push it in. The proportional editor's area of effect will pull the seams on the arm and the torso apart. While holding the left mouse button on the move tool, Scroll upwards. This will decrease the area of effect and avoid pulling on the seams. Let's take a look at the back of the character. You can see that the plate carrier is pushed out a bit too far. Select the body armor, go to edit mode, and again, using the proportional editing tool, we're going to use a large boundary box and push this mesh in so it hugs the character more tightly. Pull this area out slightly, and now the plate carrier has been fixed. Now we're going to fix the clipping issue with this collar. Press edit and using the vertex selection tool, pull small sections of the collar's mesh upwards until it appears like it's folded behind the plate carrier. Let's take a look at the waist. You can see that there's a lot of seams between the waistline and the jacket. I'm going to use a large bounding box to pull segments of the jacket's mesh down so that the jacket hangs over the belt. Continue making small adjustments until you're satisfied with the result. Next, we're going to move the character's sleeves forward. Go to edit mode and do a very broad selection. Set the proportional editing tool to a large area of effect and pull the sleeves forward, and then add a bit of curve to line it up with the arm. Then repeat the same action for the left arm. Now that we're finished with the jacket, let's move on to the pants. You can see that the pant legs stick out a bit too much. Select the pants, go to edit mode, and then drag them in with a large bounding box. And then do the same for the other side. Adjust the cloth around the heels so we don't have any clipping. Now I'm going to stop for a minute and talk about the Source IO add-on. The Source engine has a different way of rendering textures than Blender. In order to compensate for that, the author has created their own material node to assist with Valve's texture format. First, select the jacket, and then go over to the value called Rim Light Bool, and set that to zero. That will remove the artificial rim light that's used in the Source engine. Then repeat the same action again for the gloves. The rim light settings need to be set to zero for every mesh and material. Make sure to check all of them. Do the same for the pants and the plate carrier. Now we have a model with no artificial lighting. Click on the gloves. In the material node menu, there are three values called Fong, Fresnel, Ranges. Click on the top value and adjust it to 0.15. This value will give the gloves a bit more shine. Go to Cycles view for more accurate lighting. Click on the jacket and adjust the same slider to 2. Repeat the same action for the pants. Lastly, select the plate carrier and select the main material, white vest green. Change the slider to 0.45. Select the material for the buckles and increase its value to 2 for a bit more shine. Now let's change the gloves color. Select the gloves and go to shading workspace. We have a different set of textures in our shader view. Organize everything. Then press Shift A and bring in a hue saturation node. Connect that to the base color. Switch on cycles to get a better view. Adjust the hue to 0.92 to get a nice navy blue. Decrease the saturation to 0.46. Back in shader view, the next thing we will change is the plate carrier's color. Organize the node tree again. Add a color ramp. You will use this node to change the plate carrier's overall color to match the jacket. Select the black pin, pull it slightly to the right, click on the base color, then use the eyedropper tool to select the dark spot on the jacket. 
On the white pin, select a lighter part of the jacket with the eyedropper. Now move that pin over to the left slightly. To add more depth, clone that color and pull it over to the right side, then change that color to white. Drag that middle pin over to the left and set its saturation to zero. Clone the middle pin and move it to the beginning of the ramp, then make it darker. To remove the camo pattern, select the middle pin, press the plus button, and move the new color over. Pull this pin to the right slightly to make it look weathered. Use cycles view to check your work. The main problem is that we are lacking contrast, so let's add a little bit of bluing to these two pins. Then, make the light color at the end of the ramp more saturated. For more control, shift A and add in a hue saturation node. Adjust the hue to 1, adding a green tint to increase contrast. Then adjust the saturation to 0.8. To darken the plate carrier, we can reduce the value. We only need to change one thing on the pants. Go to the viewport and take a look at the belt. There is an artifact causing shadows to bleed across the belt's edge. It should appear much sharper. This will also be visible in cycles. To fix this, go to the Modifiers tab and add a Weighted Normal modifier. Then, in the Modifiers drop-down menu, select Corner Angle. In this before and after comparison, the belt appears much sharper than it did before. After adjusting our materials and meshes, we have increased the consistency between our different elements. Eliminating inconsistencies is the key to creating a cohesive kitbashed character. This creates more tonal consistency and adds to an overall realism. This concludes part 5 of my character kitbashing tutorial series. In the next part, I'll be showing you how to add accessories to your character.